Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to see about effects of PCOD on menstrual cycle and conception. I am S. Rukesi. I am working as a tutor in Triple M College of Nursing. The objectives of video are we are going to learn about definition causes, signs and symptoms, differences, diagnosis and management of PCOS, effects of PCOD on menstrual cycle and effects of PCOD on conception. Definition, PCOD or PCOS, it is a condition that affects the women's ovaries, the, uh, the reproductive organs that produces progesterone and estrogen hormones that helps in regulating the menstrual cycle and also produce small amount of hormones inhibiting relaxin and male hormones called androgens. So the PCOD or the PCOS, this condition affects the uh, women's ovaries, the production of the uh, ovum as well as it also affects the regulation of the hormone. The hormones namely progesterone and estrogen and the other small hormones are inhibiting relaxin male hormones like androgens. So these uh, hormones levels also affected in case of PCOD and PCOS. Incidence. Almost 10% of women in the world is suffering from PCOD. In compared to PCOD, women with PCOS produce higher than normal amounts of male hormones. This hormone imbalance causes them to skip menstrual periods and makes it harder for them to get pregnant. So uh, PCOD affects 10% uh, of the women in the world and in uh, PCOD is a uh, slight um, common disease and PCOS is more uh, ha harm harmful disease because in PCOS the amount of male hormones, the androgens, are produced in higher amounts so it is very it is making harder for them to get pregnant so in case of india from the very limited data pcos prevalence in india ranges from 3.7 percent to 22.5 percent yes there is a difference between pcod and pcos so pcod is uh, polycystic ovarian disease it's a medical condition in which the woman's Ovaries produce immature or partial mature eggs in large numbers and over the time these become cysts in ovaries. Due to this, ovaries become large and secrete large amount of male hormones that is androgens causing infertility, irregular menstrual cycle, hair loss and abnormal weight gain. So in case of PCOS, it is a polycystic ovarian syndrome is a metabolic disorder in which women in which the woman is affected by hormonal imbalance in the reproductive use that is between 12 and 51 years due to increase in level of male hormones females might skip the menstrual periods and have irregular ovulation pcos is a serious medical condition and it requires proper medical attention or surgical treatment so besides unpredictable hormonal behavior this condition can trigger diabetes infertility acne excessive air growth like problems it is a fair common disorder but no but uh, one with no exact cure so the other differences uh, between pcod and pcos are in case of uh, incidence the pcod is a common disorder and it occurs in 10 percent of world women population are affected by it and uh, pcos is a serious medical condition around 0.2 to 2.5 percentage of women, world women population are affected by it. So that is about the incident. Next, if we take the ovulation, PCOD does not affect the fertility of women. In this condition, women can still ovulate and become pregnant with little help. Following medication can completely can complete pregnancy. Uh, so in PCOS, it is a serious uh, it is seriously affects the fertility in women due to PCOS. Women cannot ovulate regularly and making them hard to get pregnant. If at all they become pregnant, there is a risk for miscarriage, premature birth or complication in their pregnancy. And the fourth difference is according to the complications, PCOD doesn't have any serious complications. And PCOS has serious complications such as type 2 diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure and endometrial cancer in later stage. So this is about the differences between PCOD and PCOS. Next we'll see about the pathophysiology of PCOS or PCOD in menstruation. So if you see the, the, the symptoms like basal body temperature, hormonal level, ovarian cycle and uterine cycle are given in against with the days. 
okay so if you take by basal body temperature in day 1 to day 14 there is no changes in the basal body temperature it uh, it uh, it actually uh, maintains the, the normal level but if you see in the day 14 there is a peak um, slight higher uh, it it raises the basal body temperature raises from 36 to the 36.4 to 36.7 degree celsius and uh, and then it uh, the, the throughout the luteal phase it maintains the higher basal body temperature and if you say take next the hormonal level the blue one is the uh, fsh that is follicle stimulating hormone it remains the same throughout uh, for 14 days at 14 days there is a slight increase and after that the, it remains the normal level and uh, next the pink one is the lh that is the luteinizing hormone the uh, with this hormone only we used to uh, detect the um, ovulation through the blood test okay so when we do your blood test so to to for this only uh, we are uh, checking the uh, ovulation as has occurred or not okay so in luteal hormone luteinizing hormone if you take uh, from day 1 to day uh, 14 there is no <coughs> increase it remains normal so at day 14 there is a uh more peak if you see it is a, there is a highest peak of the luteinizing hormone on day 14 that is on ovulation so if the luteinizing hormone rises to the peak with the woman might be ovulating at that time so after that it goes to the normal and if you take the east and the black one so it remains the same and just before the ovulation estrogen rises and there is a, a fluctuation in the estrogen estrogen hormone levels and progesterone and uh, if you see the progesterone the follicular phase the progesterone has nothing to do with and but during the luteal phase the progesterone increases so this is how the hormonal changes occurs during menstrual cycle and the ovarian changes are uh, during follicular phase the ovary gets uh, mature maturity it, it gets uh, mature from the graafian follicle and the, from the graafian follicle it is released as a ovum uh, on the day 14 and after that it goes into the fallopian tube this graafian follicle will go as a corpus luteum so that's what happens to the ovary and uh, if you say the if you take the uterus the inner lining of the uterus that is the endometrium so these are the changes so day 1 is the uh, menstruation so that is the first day of period so to during that time the endometrial shedding will occur till day 7 so from day 7 to day 14 uh, it is uh, called the proliferative phase so during which the hormonal changes will occur again the uterus the endometrium of the uterus get ready to receive the fertilized ovum for pregnancy so during proliferative stage and secretory stage the inner lining of the endometrium will get thickened that is by the uh, more amount of blood collection okay that's what have happened during the 14 to 28 days that is the secretory stage and after that again the uh, shedding of the endometrium will occur so this what happens for every 28 days so this is about the pathophysiology of pcos and pcod in menstruation so i said about the pathophysiology of the pcod in normal menstruation okay so if you take pcod and um, pcos during that time the menstruation uh, normal menstruation is affected the hormonal levels are affected it is not raised at the particular level and the ovulation is no, will not occur and the endometrial lining also will be affected so that's what will happen in uh, in a normal menstruation in case of pcod and and pcos okay so next is the uh, pathophysiology what happens when uh, what happens in conception in case of uh, women with pcos and pcod so normally the uh, see the normal ovary the conception will be like uh, so if uh, for a uh, conception to occur we need a ovum right so how the ovum is produced so from the uh, primordial follicle it is uh, ch- changed as primary follicle secondary follicle mature, mature follicle and then after the mature follicle the ovum is released into the fimbria and then the uh corpus luteum will uh, the the outer lining will ch- change as the corpus luteum and corpus albicans so that is how the ovary the, the follicle is destroyed inside the ovary this is the cycle which occurs okay so in case of polycystic ovary the normal see if you say the primary follicle there is a 
primordial follicle primary follicle and secondary follicle but uh, during from the secondary follicle to the mature follicle there is the uh, development is stopped uh, that may be because of many reasons we don't know okay so maybe due to the hormonal changes or weight gain or uh, any cyst development inside the ovary so there may be many reasons behind it but there is uh, the 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 changes of uh, secondary follicles the major follicle the development is stopped okay so there is multiple immature follicles and they are and they remain inside the ovaries and they uh, turn into a Uh, cyst uh, for, for ovaries filled with cyst okay they they turn into a fluid filled cyst and the ovary is, uh, will be filled with cyst okay so that's what happens in case of uh, polycystic ovary disease so with the without the ovum uh, released into the fimbria the conception will not occur so this is the reason behind uh, the uh, the woman not getting conception in case of Uh, not getting pregnant in case of PCOS and PCOD. Okay, so there is a, the the secondary follicle is not converted into mature follicle. There is a growth uh, development is is stopped. The development is stopped because of various reasons. So that is the reason the woman is not able to get pregnant. Okay. Next we'll see about the signs and symptoms are some women's Uh, start seeing sim symptoms around the time of their first period some women only discover when they have gained a lot of weight or trouble getting pregnant the most common signs and symptoms of pcod problem or pcos problem in females are irregular menstruation that is oligomenorrhea skipped or absence of menstruation amenorrhea heavy menstrual bleeding menorrhagia has excessive hair growth that is called uh, that may be on face body including on back belly and chest so that is called ex excessive hair growth that is called hirsutism okay and uh, next is acne acne may, uh, may come upon the face that is face chest and upper back and weight gain hair loss hair loss on the scalp gets thinner and fall out and the uh, skin darkening the darkening of the skin may be on the neck in the groin and under the breast we we'll see about the causes of P pcos exact how women get affected by pcos is not known that is the exact causes of pcos is not known however there are some significant factors the first is excessive insulin production the excess insulin levels in body might increase androgen production it is called a male hormone which is less very less in female that causes difficulty with the ovulation so if there is more insulin production the male hormone is produced more along with that so this insulin production will trigger this uh, male hormone also to produce more so that causes uh, <coughs> difficulty in ovulation uh, in women okay next is androgen production excess androgen production these ovaries produce abnormally excess androgen hormones that can lead to acne and hirsutism that is uh, hair growth on the face and body so the androgen which is produced by in large amounts in ovaries in case of women so they can have this uh, excessive hair growth on uh, face and body and low grade inflammation as per the recent studies the female with pcos are having low grade inflammation that causes increased levels of androgen production which can lead to blood vessels or a heart problem so here also in case of inflammation we see that there is an increased level of androgen production so again that causes infertility in females so that can also lead to blood vessels problems and uh, heart problems okay next is hereditary the woman with pcos show certain genetic correlations their sisters or their mother so anybody in the family uh, may be affected with pcos now we'll see about the complications So every woman will think what happened to their body when they have PCOD or PCOS. Having higher than normal androgen levels can affect your health. These are the complications of PCOD and PCOD PCOS problem that require medical attention. So there can be abnormal uterine bleeding, infertility or hypertension, infertility, and type two diabetes, preterm labor and preterm birth, metabolic syndrome, risk for high blood sugar. 
high blood pressure heart disease diabetes and stroke and nash that is called a non alcoholic steato hepatitis so in case of uh, pcod or pcos the woman may have this uh, hepatitis problem that may be because of higher uh, androgen production so next is uh, complication is depression many women end up experiencing depression and anxiety due to unwanted hair growth and other symptoms and sleep apnea more common in women who are overweight causes repeated pauses in breathing during the night which interrupt sleep so if you don't have sleep in the night you will, you will end up in stress and anxiety though then again it uh, contributes to the infertility and next is uh, endometrial cancer due to the thickened uterine lining so we see that in case of menstrual cycle every 20 every 28 days uh, during the secretory phase the endometrial lining get thickens okay so it has to be shed on the day 1 okay on the uh, during every month so if it is not shed and the endometrial uh, lining remains it may turn as an endometrial cancer next is miscarriage spontaneous loss of pregnancy female next uh, those who are diagnosed with the pcod problem or pcos should monitor their health on regular basis to avoid any complications in future if left untreated pcod problem in future can lead to type 2 diabetes so that is also one kind of complication and obesity and other mental issues due to hormonal imbalance whereas pcos in future can have serious complication such as risk of hypertension hyperglycemia endometrial cancer and pregnancy complications like premature birth preeclampsia and miscarriage so these are some of the complications of pcod and pcos now we'll see how to diagnose this condition pcod or pcos has physical findings that affects body systems and can be diagnosed with blood test and imaging depending on symptoms such as irregular periods unwanted male pattern hair growth on a woman's chest face and back acne or thinning of the scalp hair and uh, gynecologist will ask about the medical history eating and drinking habits taking any prescription or over the counter medications including vitamins and supplements so to diagnose pcod or pcos a gynecologist may recommend pelvic examination so in case of pelvic examination they will check for masses and abnormalities or any growth in the reproductive organs and next is the blood test blood test will help the, to understand the hormone levels these includes fasting lipid profiles to check the levels of total cholesterol high density lipoprotein and triglyceride levels low density lipoprotein and glucose tolerance test so the next diagnostic procedure is the imaging test ultrasound imaging test to check the size of the ovaries the lining of the uterus and the cyst in the ovaries apart from the above the gynecologist might recommend additional tests to check for the complications so these may include periodical monitoring of the blood pressure glucose tolerance cholesterol and triglyceride levels screening for anxiety and depression and screening for obstructive sleep apnea so this all the the gynecologist will uh, check in addition with the above diagnostic procedures next we'll see about the treatment for menstruation so this pcod affects uh, menstruation and conception so we'll see first about the how to treat the menstruation in case of pcod or pcos there is no cure for pcos but there are several ways to treat and manage it the first is diet and exercise if a girl is overweight or obese a doctor will recommend lifestyle changes weight loss can be very effective in easing many of the health conditions associated with pcos such as high blood pressure and diabetes your doctor or a registered dietitian can look at your food intake and your exercises and activity to create a weight loss program for you the exercise is very important to improve your body sensitivity to insulin and prevent progression of diabetes the next is medicines sometimes doctor might might prescribe medicines to treat pcos a doctor might have uh, 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 might prescribe birth control pills to help control the androgen levels in her body and regulate the menstrual cycle the birth control pills may help control acne and excessive hair growth in some girls but they don't work for everyone it may take up to 6 months to determine whether treatment with the birth control pills is effective 
the anti androgens also uh, sometimes used to treat pcos these medicines counter the effects of excess androgen on a girl's body and can help clear up the skin and hair growth problems so the this is called a tweezing or waxing tweezing or waxing done at home or at a salon and can manage excess hair growth a dermatologist a doctor who specializes in skin problems or qualified uh, hair removal specialist can use electrolysis and laser surgery treatment for long term removal of unwanted hair but they are more expensive so the the first uh, picture is about the uh, hair removal and the next uh, picture is about the tweezing and waxing so excessive hair growth can be controlled with uh, this kind of uh, uh, treatment the next uh, this picture is uh, the birth control pills so i have told you already how birth control pills will uh, control uh, control the production of uh, androgen levels in the body and regulate the menstrual cycle so the birth control pills may help in controlling the acne and excessive hair growth in uh, and uh, in some uh, girls and they do not work for everyone it may take up to 6 months to determine whether the treatment with the birth control uh, is effective so this birth control pills contains totally about 28 uh, tablets so you have to take it without missing it in the night every day so the first 21 tablets are with the um, uh, which contains the hormones the other seven tablets contains vitamins so uh, regularly if you take for one month uh, for a th for at least three months then your uh, period should be re made regular so the next picture is about the um, counseling in case of depression So some girls with the PCOS may become depressed in which case it may help to talk to a therapist or other mental health professional and talking with the other teens and women with PCOS is a great way to share the information about the treatment and get support so we we'll see about the treatment for uh, conception in case of women with the PCOD or PCOS The first is maintaining healthy body weight. BMI that is body mass index ranges from 18.5 to 24.9 is considered as ideal and healthy for females. So the BMI if it is above 30 then it is they are considered as obese and not healthy. So maintaining healthy body weight or weight loss help in improving overall body cholesterol levels reduce the risk of high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, maintaining ideal insulin levels. and androgen levels that also restore ov ovulation phase in the menstrual cycle so maintaining a healthy body weight is very essential in case of in in order to uh, acquire fertility in case of women with infertility so next is the diet and regular exercise so how you will achieve this uh, uh, ideal body weight is by doing this diet and regular exercise so you should limit the carbohydrate consumption if you have pcod or pcos follow a low carbohydrate diet or complex carbohydrates diet that help in maintaining insulin levels eat fish meat eggs vegetables that grow above the ground and natural fats like sunflower seeds pumpkin seeds sesame seeds and butter and avoid sugar and starchy foods like potatoes bread rice pasta and beans and also you should do regular exercises and be active if you have pcod or pcos doing regular exercises and becoming active will help in regulating blood sugar levels and keep your weight under control so any diet that helps you lose weight can help your condition however some diet may have advantages over others weight loss can also uh, improve cholesterol levels lower insulin and reduce heart disease and diabetes risk and 20 minutes of moderate intensity exercise at least 5 days a week can help the woman to lose weight losing weight with the exercises also improves ovulation and insulin levels so maintaining a, um, a healthy diet and regular exercises and maintaining good uh, ideal body weight is essential next you should maintain the blood sugar levels under control so this can be achieved in by uh, doing a regular exercises and next is may uh, regulating your menstrual cycle so the regulate the menstrual cycle by medication to treat hormonal imbalance and insulin resistance and
ovulation production can be done okay uh, when uh, in uh, by the ovulation induction drugs so these are some of the ovulation induction drugs they are clomiphene citrate letrozole and uh, these drugs will improve the quality and quantity of the ovulation through the these are some of the oral medi medications okay clomiphene citrate clomiphene citrate and letrozole are the oral medications so infertility treatment can be done through uh, fertility uh, drugs also next is metformin so metformin we all we already know that it reduces the insulin level in the body so and thereby it reduces the androgen levels also and uh, contributing to the uh, fertility and uh, this is the chorionic uh, gonadotropin injection so this is a fertility injection so it produces human chorionic gonadotropins and that helps in the fertility okay so this is the surgical treatment for uh, uh, in case of infertility so i told you the ovaries will be will look like cyst and there will be more amount of androgen producing tissues in the ovaries so this is a procedure called laparoscopic drilling okay laparoscopic drilling with uh, chroma perturbation will be done chroma perturbation means they will inject a dye into the uh, uterus and into the fallopian tubes they will look for the spillage of the dye in the uh, abdomen uh, through the laparoscopy so if at all there is a spillage we know there is no uh, blockage in the fallopian tubes if there is no spillage then there uh, then we can conclude there is some uh, blockage in the fallopian tube then we have to go for the next level of treatment so this is the picture um, uh, tells the ovarian drilling so multiple holes are made in the ovaries in case of pcod ovaries this the pcod ovaries will look like this so multiple holes are made uh, and thereby destroying the androgen producing tissues in the ovaries and making and helps the uh, mature ovum to release into the fimbria so this is the picture net the next picture uh, shows the uh, laparoscopic uh, instrument making a hole into the egg tray so this is the egg tray the cross section of the ovary uh, we say as the egg tray the holes are made into the egg tray and the, the egg will be released into the um, peritoneal ca cavity so these are some of the alternative remedies in case of uh, pcod for conception uh, first is diet and exercise a healthy diet is important to overall health for anyone but a low calorie low carb diet that provides all essential nutrition is said to uh, significantly improve insulin sensitivity and fertility in people with pcos aiming for at least 30 minutes of moderate exercise three times per week is also beneficial if your bm is high symptoms of pcos can be improved by losing excess, excess weight it also helpful uh, to speak with a dietitian and uh, or a nutrition who can provide input on healthy eating and offer motivation so next picture is about the acupuncture the research from 2010 suggests that acupuncture might be safe and effective in treating pcos by it can increase uh, blood flow to the ovaries reducing ovarian volume and ovarian cyst managing hyperglycemia reducing cortisol levels assisting in weight loss keeping in mind while there's little evidence of harm it's unclear if there are any possible benefits either acupuncture for pcos hasn't been well studied most research is needed to determine if it has any benefit for treating pcos next is the essential oils essential oils are the plant extracts that produce variety of fragrances that may impact the way you feel many people find inhaling essential oils relaxing or invigorating other uses other others use essential oils to ease symptoms of various health conditions so research into the effectiveness of essential oils is limited a study in rats that was published in 2017 evaluated the effects of essential oils on pcos the researchers concluded that spearmint inhibits the testosterone and restores follicular development in ovarian tissue. They also suggest that it has potential in treating PCOS. Whether that translates to human remains to be unseen. There is not enough research to make firm conclusions. Next is aromatherapy. Aromatherapy is generally considered safe, though uh, side effects can occur. Use it if it makes you feel good. 
but make sure you are using essential oils correctly. Some can interfere with medication. So discuss all the complementary remedies with your doctor. Next is herbs and supplementations. Even natural herbs and supplementations can interact with medications. If you are taking medicine for PCOS related to infertility, speak with your doctor before taking the supplements. In 2017, a review found some low quality evidence that women with PCOS may benefit from inositol and omega-3 fish oil supplements. There, uh, there aren't enough high, value, high quality studies addressing the safety and effectiveness of herbal and nutritional supplements for pe people with PCOS. So talk with your doctor about the diet, whether you are lacking in nutrients or whether supplements are a good choice for you. The next is about the mental health. Ex experiencing difficulty conceiving can be frustrating and uh, going through fertility treatments can be emotional a roller coaster. These are physical problems, but they can place added stress on relationships and on mental health. Depression and anxiety are fairly common among people with PCOS, though it's unclear how these conditions are related. If you have depression or anxiety, or uh, having trouble coping, rest assured that you are not alone. Help is available. Your doctor can evaluate your symptoms and refer you to the appropriate specialist if needed. And uh, if at all uh, the woman is, uh, uh, um, is suffering from endometriosis, so yeah, and they are not responding to the treatment, uh, then they might be, should be referred to the doctor as well. Endometriosis is a condition in which the type of tissue the that lines the uterus grows elsewhere in the pelvis. Okay, this is abnormal tissue growth can block the fallopian tubes or damage the egg or sperms. Okay, so endometriosis is a condition in which the endometrial lining which should be uh, grown inside the uterus uh, is growing outside of the uterus. That is called endometriosis. So that uh, if at all it grows on the fimbrial end, imagine it, it blocks the Philippine tubes right so if it uh, grows into the Philippine tubes again it blocks it so this is a serious condition according to American College of Obstetrician Gynecologist about 40% of women with the fertility have uh, infertility have uh, endometriosis symptoms of endometriosis can include heavy periods pelvic pain around the menstruation or during sexual intercourse and pain during bowel movements or urination not everyone with endometriosis has these symptoms. A study in 2019 addressed the overlap of PCOS and endometriosis. The research included women with the PCOS who hadn't responded to clomiphene citrate. After a procedure called laparoscopic ovarian drilling, 7.7% were found to have incidental endometriosis. The next treatment for uh, uh, conception in case of PCOD or PCOS is the surgical treatment is uh, IVF. It is the in vitro in vitro fertilization. So sometimes the lifestyle adjustment and medicines and surgery don't work. So if that happens, the IVF may be the may be an option. So the patient will be start uh, with the uh, ovarian uh, stimulation hormone therapy. So the ovaries are stimulated to produce eggs, and the multiple eggs are produced at a time. And this uh, in step one, there is a, a ovarian stimulation, and step two is the uh, multiple. When there is multiple eggs are produced in the ovaries, the eggs will be aspirated through a vacuum pump. And step three, uh, the preparation of the sperm, and step four is the fertilization between the sperm and the ovum. Step five is the embryo development. So this embryo will be made to after the fertilization, the embryos will be made to develop some will be transferred to the uh, frozen for a later use some will be transferred to the uterus to implant and develop so ivf may increase the likelihood of a multiple birth the next is the uh, it is similar like uh, ivf this is a uh, gift is the gamete intrafallopian transfer and zift is the zygote intrafallopian transfer so it uh, here the first step is eggs are aspirated from the ovary and placed inside the preparation, prepare the semen sample and the fertilized embryos or the zygotes are uh, transferred into the fallopian tubes. So in the in this case, what happened, the, the implantation will occur naturally into the 
uh, endometrial cavity. So it is not directly placed inside the endometrium, uterine endometrium, but instead they will be placed inside the fallopian tubes. From there, the embryo has to travel and reach the endometrial uh, lining of the uterus and gets implanted. So next is the uh, intracytoplasmic sperm injection, ICSI. So here what happens? the sperm is directly injected so here they will select a mature sperm and a mature ovum and the sperm is directly injected into the cytoplasm of the egg and the holding tool would be given so that it is not gone out and then uh, the sperm and the, the fertilization will take place it's it will turn into a zygote and embryo and get and it will it will grow okay so this is called intracytoplasmic injection intracytoplasmic sperm injection. So to conclude, PCOS is a condition that involves a hormonal imbalance that can interfere with ovulation. Some people with PCOS have difficulty getting pregnant. There are effective treatments though. With medical interventions, many people with fertility problems due to PCOS are able to conceive. It is also important to note that PCOS doesn't mean that you can never get pregnant. Always use contraception if you don't want to give, conceive, even if you have PCOS. So till now we have seen about the definition, incidence and differences of the between PCOS and PCOD and pathophysiology of the PCOD condition in case of menstruation and what happens in case of conception and signs and symptoms, causes of PCOS, complications, diagnosis of PCOD, PCOS, and uh, treatment. And so I hope you all have gained some knowledge about PCOD or PCOS. Thank you for your kind listening. Thank you.